Tonight, the BBC claims poor working conditions at an Apple factory in China. President Obama says Sony made a mistake caving to hackers. And where'd all of your Instagram followers go? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 239 for Friday, December 19th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with one click. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. A BBC program called Panorama recently sent undercover reporters to factories for Apple supply chain uh, partner Pegatron, which is near Shanghai. And the program claims to have uncovered poor treatment of workers and a breach of standards on workers' hours. Apple CEO Tim Cook says he's deeply offended by these claims that Apple mistreats workers in factories where the company's devices get assembled. The BBC report says workers fell asleep during 12-hour shifts on the iPhone 6 production line and were forced to work 18 days in a row after being denied requests for days off. Apple Senior Vice President of Operations Jeff Williams argues that Apple has tracked the weekly hours of over 1 million workers within the supply chain and that its suppliers have achieved an average of 93 percent compliance with the 60-hour workweek limit this year. Apple employs around 1,400 manufacturing workers in China. The company told the BBC that they worked with suppliers to prevent excessive overtime and that no other company is doing as much to ensure fair and safe working conditions. Well, the hackers behind this colossal Sony Pictures attack successfully got the release of that movie the interview pulled from theaters. Now they're making more demands. This is according to CNN. The network reports that top Sony executives received an email from the hacking group last night with a message saying it would withhold publishing more personal data, but only if the studio never lets the interview the movie, the interview, see the light of day. Meanwhile, U.S. officials are now saying that North Korea is behind the attack, which has included releasing a treasure trove of stolen data to the public. Sony canceled the film's release on Wednesday and has said it has no further plans to make it public. President Obama is weighing in on this Sony debacle, saying it was actually a mistake for Sony Pictures to cancel screenings of the interview after it received threats of violence, and that this could lead to an era of forced censorship in Hollywood. The president stresses, quote, we cannot have a society in which some dictator, some place can start imposing censorship here in the United States, and said, quote, imagine if producers and distributors and others start engaging in self-censorship because they don't want to offend the sensibility of somebody whose sensibilities probably need to be offended. Sony still wants to find a way to distribute the film, but is having problems finding an online service that would be willing in the face of an attack. Sony does own the streaming service Crackle. It acquired it back in 2006. And Sony's PlayStation Store is another option, which sells and rents movies through its game consoles and devices. But again, we don't know what they'll do or what the fate of the interview is. I'm actually... Kind of interested to see it at this point. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about this story because there are just so many angles of it. And today to help us with that is Ian Thompson, tech reporter for The Register. Hey, Ian. Hey there. How's it, how's it going? It's going really well. Thanks for being on the show on this rainy Friday. Yes, it's a little damp outside, but certainly the news cycle is keeping things interesting. It sure is. In fact, there's an article on the register today that, that uh, again, the FBI has said, all right, well, it looks like the Sony hack came from North Korea. And, okay, so that's what the FBI has officially gone on record as saying they were expected to today. Why mm -hmm. do they feel confident that this is indeed the case? Because some people think that it's quite far-fetched. A lot of people think it's very far-fetched. Most of the serious security people I've spoken to today think that the FBI's evidence is utter bollocks. I mean, they've released very little stuff. They say there are IP addresses which link to North Korea, but they're not going to say what those IP addresses are. Uh, they say the code uh, that was used in the attack was similar to that used in Korea, but don't mention the fact that the same code was also used in an attack against Saudi Arabia, which is hardly a North Korean target. And there are a lot of other sort of 
bits and bobs. The whole FBI statement was full of weasel words. And certainly from one of the chaps I spoke to today, could be knocked down easily by a barely competent defense lawyer, to be honest. What do you mean by weasel words? What 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 language in there gives you pause? Well, it's all sort of indicated that and associated with and code that was, you know, could have been used in this sort of thing. I mean, part of the, the security industry works well because people share information. And so far, we're having to take the FBI's word for it completely that this is what's going down and therefore North Korea you know, is linked to it. Um, what they need to do, if they're going to be taken seriously at all, is release some kind of information. But based on what they've given us at the moment, you could take a awful lot of malware samples and link them to North Korea using pretty much the same evidence because malware writers reuse code. And the attack that was used in South Korea was very successful and it's quite understandable that people would reuse that code for other attacks. Now, if you know, if somebody said uh, this, um, this you know, Britain-based movie house was hacked by the U.S., you know, we'd all say, well, what do you mean? A person who lives in the U.S. is it a group? Is it the U.S. government? Those are very different things. I feel like we're hearing uh, the term "hacked by North Korea." What exactly does the FBI claim that means? Is it? the people at the top of the government? Is it, you know, a group that just happens to have IP addresses that are linked back to North Korea? What specifically, who specifically are we blaming? Well, the FBI statement says that they believe the North Korean state was behind the attack, but they don't name the actual attackers. Now, that could mean that they believe this, this was a government-sponsored attack, like such as those that are carried out by the American government overseas. Um, or it could mean that basically there are North Korea, people within North Korea uh, who were doing this off their own bat, which is highly unlikely considering that internet con connectivity over there is so highly restricted. If there was an internet attack coming from North Korea, it would have to get state approval. Um, what they, what the FBI don't go into is how that they know that these, this actual, that this came from North Korea IP addresses rather than people spoofing North Korea IP addresses, for example. And there's an awful lot of other stuff in there which doesn't quite add up. Chiefly among which that based on what we know of the communications between the hackers and Sony, the film, the, the interview wasn't even raised until two weeks into the, into the attack after the media started talking about it. Mm -hmm. What do you make of President Obama saying Sony should not have caved? It sets a precedent uh, for a, a variety of censorship that you know could be basically instilled through fear of, of what somebody might be able to obtain as far as personal records go. What else could Sony have done? Should they have gone ahead with the movie and, and hoped that none of the threats of violence were, were real? Well, to be honest, I think it wasn't really Sony's decision. The cinema chains decided to to bottle it and, mm -hmm. and, and not to run it. I mean, we've. I think, honestly, personally, I think they should have run it. We had the same sort of thing when uh, Team America uh, came out and North Koreans protested vigorously to various embassies that this film should, be not, should not be shown and were told where to stick it. And I think that Sony <laughs> should have gone ahead and actually done it. I mean, after all, from Sony's perspective, They've already lost, you know, forty-seven thousand social security uh, social security numbers. Their staff are being uh, having their identities stolen on a regular basis now, or attempting to be stolen. And there isn't really an awful lot more that Sony can lose apart from embarrassing emails from their from their senior executives. Now, cancelling the film gave them an easy out, but I'm not sure that it's actually going to stop the flow of information. Ian Thompson is a tech reporter at The Register, and we thank him for joining us on Friday on TN2. Ian, before I let you go, remind people where they can keep up with all your fantastic work. Oh, you're too kind. You can always get us on theregister.co.uk or on my Twitter handle, Ian Thompson. Thanks so much, Ian. Have a great weekend and a lovely and Christmas. You too. And happy Christmas. Coming up on the show, Instagram flushes a bunch of spam right down the drain. Reddit's giving its users some equity. Some of them anyway, not all of us. And Google's plan for Android in cars. But first, let's take a moment to thank ZipRecruiter for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Okay, so let's say you're hiring. You've got a job position. It's very important. You don't want to hire just anybody. You want to hire the best person. What do you do? You want to put your job on a variety of job posting sites and make sure that the best people see those jobs. 
That takes time and effort. Who's got the time or wants to make the effort? None of us. ZipRecruiter.com is our solution because it posts that job that you've got to over 50 job sites. That's like Craigslist and LinkedIn and Twitter without you having to do anything manually. It's just a single click process. You can find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. You just post once and those qualified candidates start rolling in to ZipRecruiter's own interface, which is very easy to use. Gone are the days of, of going back and forth on email with a bunch of people that you don't even know yet, people calling your office, people coming by. You screen candidates through ZipRecruiter, you can rate them, and then you hire the right person fast. Now, if you're looking for a job, ZipRecruiter works for you as well. It helps you find your next employer as much as it helps that next employer hire you. You can have the newest job postings sent to your inbox every day so you don't miss anything. It's good for employers as potential candidates learn about new postings quickly. And then you get motivated candidates this way because they want to be on top of it. They want to get hired by you. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses. Got a lot of happy people using ZipRecruiter. Our listeners and viewers of Tech News Tonight can try ZipRecruiter. For a free, completely free four-day trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Think of all the people that could could be hired in four days. ZipRecruiter.com slash T N and number two. We thank ZipRecruiter for their support of tech news tonight. On to a few more stories that we're following today. Okay, let's talk about this Instagram spam. Did you happen to lose a bunch of Instagram followers over the last, oh, 24, 36 hours? If yes, you're not alone. The four-year-old company, which is owned by Facebook, has deleted a massive amount of accounts that it determines are spammy and what is being called the Instagram rapture. I love that. More than 29% of followers on Instagram's own official account, which makes up 18.9 million users, disappeared between Wednesday and Thursday. This is according to a graphic of the top 100 Instagram accounts compiled by software developer Zach Alia. Celebrities and others with large following saw dramatic follower cuts as well. For example, good old Justin Bieber lost 3.5 million fans. Kim Kardashian lost 1.3 million fans. Now, I... I am obviously a huge celebrity. I only lost about 500 myself, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Instagram says in many cases, the purged accounts had already been deactivated for sending spam or otherwise violating Instagram's terms of service, but were only actually being deleted from the follower accounts of other users now. The company said last week it has 300 million monthly active users, which excludes those spam accounts. In other Instagram news, Citigroup has raised the valuation of the photo and video sharing network from $19 billion to $35 billion. Now, of course, Instagram is owned by Facebook. Facebook acquired it back in April of 2012 for $1 billion, which seemed like so much at the time. At that time, Instagram only had around 27 million users, and it was only an iOS app. Remember those days? Instagram has since grown to have more active users than Twitter, although they're different. But, you know. They're competitors. Google's working on a version of Android that would be built directly into cars, sources are telling Reuters, which would allow drivers to access the internet without connecting the car to a smartphone. Google's own Android Auto software requires a phone to be plugged into a compatible car with a built-in screen to access streaming music and maps and other apps. Vehicles with Android Auto will start to debut in 2015. Google hasn't shared long-term plans to put Android Auto directly into cars, but Reuters reports that the company now plans to do so when it rolls out the next version of its operating system, dubbed Android M, which is expected in about a year or so. Direct integration into cars means that drivers could use Google services more regularly with having to pl without having to plug in their phone, and it could allow Google to make more use of things in a car like a camera, sensors, fuel gauge, and other connections that will come with some newer car models. Reddit has announced a new initiative called Reddit Notes, which is a method to give equity to the site's readers using a lottery method. 950,000 notes will be given away at random to anyone who has had an account on Reddit since before September 30th of 2014, and the notes will be given out next fall. The company says that they're still working out details on both the technological and legal aspects of the project, especially regarding how Reddit Notes will work within existing government regulations. Reddit is currently also hiring a cryptocurrency executive. So something's going on on the money side of Reddit. I hope I get a note. 
Finally, Facebook is getting into the holiday spirit. You know, nothing says the holidays like Facebook, right? It's thrown a little cheer into its messenger app. So if you use it, you now have a festive frame for selfies that you might take on, on New Year's Eve with your family or alone if you're like me. Snow globe chat heads, that's new. Holiday inspired sticker packs and a new creative labs app by the messenger team called Sticker to Four Messenger that enables you to add stickers to a photo photo and send them to friends on Messenger. Oh, how lovely. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can, of course, write us with any feedback you may have to TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. I will say, though, uh, next week we have uh, a, a, a four specials. We don't have a TN2 on Christmas Day, but we have four specials throughout the week that we have pre-recorded because we want to give you uh, new access to new shows, uh, but uh, the Twit Studio will actually be dark. So this is our last live show for about a week since that Twit Studio will be closed for the Christmas holiday, for most of us anyway. So we thought we'd leave you with a little video of an annual holiday tradition in many families, cats destroying Christmas trees. <laughs> Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.